for identifying custom coding um, used by customers by the user exits we provide in SAP. So just that all configuration is set up in customizing for release strategy. And through checks and the information provided that I provide today, I hope that will help you in the future to resolve problems that arise when configuring or using release strategies. So without further ado, we'll go into the agenda of what we're going to cover today. So the first topic will be just to give a brief overview of release strategy in requisition purchase order documents. And we will be going into the customizing setup, but the intention of the webinar today is not to focus on the configuration of the release strategy, so I'll briefly go through this in the customizing. And I'd like to go through a demo where I will go through a couple of examples with you for, as a customer to help identify um, causes of and um, how to look at uh, identifying why the re reasons for a release strategy is not triggered in your purchasing documents. So we'll work through a couple of examples, do a couple of checks on the system and give the reason why the release strategy is not triggered for the purchasing document. We can provide a checklist to detect and solve release strategy issues. And we'll go into frequently asked questions. So what I've seen coming in through SAP in incidents from you as the customers to see um, what uh, we will provide to help you as the customer to resolve issues. And in that, we will provide relevant KBAs and notes that will help you. So why use release strategies? So the procurement department of a company consists of many buyers who are responsible for buying goods and as such there's a hierarchy of people like the operator or buyer who creates the order and the purchasing manager who supervise and control the procurement process. So as the purchase order is a legal document, it is important to control the process to avoid any errors or unauthorized transactions. So for this, SAP has provided the concept of release strategies. So the release strategy defines the approval process for purchase requisition or external purchasing documents. And the release strategy specifies the release codes necessary and the sequence in which the releases have to be effected. And within a release strategy, you can define a maximum number of eight release codes within a release strategy. And the assignment then of the release strategy to a requisition or a purchasing document is based on the release conditions. So in SAP, we have the runtime structure with the name CEKKO, the Communication Release Strategy Determination Purchasing Document, which provides all the possible lists of fields using which a release strategy can be configured. And to view these fields of the structure, you can use transaction code SE12, and this will help you to view all the uh, fields that can be used within a release strategy. So as a today's purpose, I'm going to look, as I said, with the creation of a requisition, but we will be mostly focusing on the purchasing document of a purchase order. But as I said, release strategies are used for all external documents for the contract or getting agreement. But there is a little difference between the requisition release strategies and the overall of a purchase order. So as you can see, when you create a requisition, this is where the release strategy process lies, where we approve the requisition and then create the PO. And then we will also, there where we create the PO, and then we have the approval process of that purchase order. So therefore, we can carry out further purchasing um, documents, such as the, uh, carry out the goods receipt and the invoice verification and the invoice release once the approval has been done for that PO. Okay, so what makes up the release strategy? So we need to create individual characteristics for each of these fields. And here, as we can see, we have a characteristic value, which is the, all maintained in customizing. So I'm just giving an example here of the material group. So the, we also need to give it a name, a realistic name, what we're going to call it. And we will sign this to the CEKKO structure in the additional data tab, but we will be going into this further in the system. But I just wanted to give a snapshot view, a uh, shot view of the characteristic. So once we have all the characteristics ready, we need to group them into a class, and the class type is 032 for a release strategy. 
So for the purposes of today's example, I am going to be using these characteristics, which is the order type, purchasing group, material group, the total net order value, and the purchasing document category. So I am assi have assigned all of these characteristic values to my class and the class type 032. The next process then will be where we could maintain the release group. So here we can see that I've created my release group DL of the release object type 2, which is for purchase orders, and maintain my class. Then we will maintain our, have maintained our release codes. And here, this will give us uh, the sequence in order who is to release the purchasing documents. And for this example today, I have created for my supervisor to be released, manager, and my senior manager. So these are the release codes maintained within customizing. Then we have the release indicator. So what the purchase documents, when you have the approval process on um, the release codes, is it, uh, on the final release that it is purchasing document is released or is it still blocked depending on the release code hierarchy that you are using. And then we have the makeup of the release strategy itself. So where all of the combination of all of the customizing settings met here um, are met here within the release strategy. So the characteristic values that will be assigned to the release strategy. So those are all the elements of the release strategy. And to configure a release strategy, as I mentioned earlier, it's all through, done through customizing. So this is the navigation path. So we follow through material management, purchasing, purchase order. It's all on purchase requisition, release procedure for purchase order. So as I said today, we'll be focusing on the purchase orders. We can edit characteristic, edit class and define the elements for the release strategy all through customizing. But we also have the transaction that is, we can use transaction CT04 to maintain the characteristics and CL02. So today I want to actually talk uh, briefly about the purchase requisition as well. And the purchase requisition is an internal document. And for release strategies, it is a little bit different to the external purchasing documents in that we can have a release strategy triggered at item level or at overall level. So we can use one release type for a specific document type. So for example, we would use document type NB. We would use overall. And for the R document type UB, we could use the item release. So in customizing, um, we would need to flag here the overall requisition release for the release group as well as maintaining it for the document type. And the two customizing settings must tally and be checked or unchecked together. And as I mentioned, for the purchase requisition, we can have it at item level or overall level. So we need to maintain two separate classes. So I'm just giving it the call of this class today. You can call the class um, what you wish, but we need to maintain it with two different classes because of the characteristic value. Here we will use CBAN GSWRT for the item release, which is the total value on item level, and we could use the CBAN GFWRT for the overall, so it's the total value of the overall document. So this is the reason why we are used two separate classes for the purchase requisition using this characteristic. And as I said, the on the item level, so to view the release strategy, you look at the item uh, tab, and the release strategy is maintained there, and it can be released per item, or on the header level for overall release. So I want to go in now to talk about doing a demo and want to go into the customizing. We'll have a brief look at the customizing and we will also then work through a few examples. So just to go in what we are going to use today in our test system that I have set up. So as I mentioned earlier, um, for the purpose of today's test, I have created the following characteristics. As I said, the order type, the purchasing group, material group, 
total net order value and the document type and assign them to my class. And this is the characteristics view. So as you hear I mentioned earlier, we need to reference it to the CEKKO structure and the field name MATKL. And we will go into the system now to create a purchase order, but first we will look at the customizing and what checks we need to do to see what the value, the release strategy that should be triggered for the values here maintained. Image that, just checking. Okay, so for today's example, as I mentioned, we are creating, this will be a purchase order, but as I mentioned, we'll just we'll go to customizing view. So we can do transaction. And we go through to purchase order. Define release procedure for purchase order. Within here, as I said, we have maintained all our um, customizing. We have maintained our release group, our release code, our release indicator, and the release strategy itself. So I'll just go into one of my release strategies that I have created. Here I said I received my release group, LT, and my release strategy, LD. I have assigned my uh, supervisor and manager release codes to this release strategy. These are the prerequisites, the release status in how it is configured to who is going to release it. So as I said, 101, the supervisor and the manager in his uh, block status changeable. So here we will create a new release once both of the uh, supervisor and manager have released the document. So here I want to get more go into the classification. So these are the values that I have maintained for the release strategy. So my document type will be all of LNB, my purchasing group 001, my material group 01, the total net order value is bigger than or equal to 500, and my document type category is created for purchase order. So the transaction that I would first use to check if the release strategy will be triggered for these values is CL30N. So it will check the value. So as I said, my values of that example that I'm using is document type LNB, my purchasing group 001, my material group for this example is 01, my total net order value that I'll be having for this document will be 200, say, and the document character category S. So these are the values that I want the release strategy to be triggered for my document. Selecting on the final initial class will tell me whether the customizing has been set up correctly. So here I can see for these values that I have maintained, I expect this release strategy to be triggered for my purchasing document. So let's go to creation of the purchase order. So my document type is LNB. I'll create my vendor, enter my vendor. I'm going to enter my purchase organization, my purchasing group, which is one of the characteristic values, and my company code. my material, my plant, I set a creative for the value of 200. So I have entered all of my characteristic values that I believe will trigger the release strategy. So to call a release strategy, we can either save the document or we can go to the purchase order and the check flag. As said, for purchasing document, the release strategy is called at header level. So here we can see that the release strategy is called. And it should be equal to LRD. So we can see that the release strategy is triggered for the value less than 500 euros. So this is correct, that the release strategy is triggered. However, just to give a... Um, if I wanted to up change the value that I have set up in the system, total net order value, if I wanted to change it to 500, 
I want to check the release strategy that should be triggered within this case for my setup through customizing. But here I can see that there is two release strategies called. Now this would be incorrect. For the values that we maintain, for the characteristics, we should have a unique value. Overlapping release strategies is not allowed because the system cannot determine which release strategy is to be taken when you create a, value, a document with this value. So as you can see, if you expected the, the uh, release strategy LTLD to be triggered, it may not be the case. So like I so said, if I create the value for 500 euros, The system will trigger a release strategy in the background again when we change the value, increase the value or the net price. So here I can see the LRLD is still being triggered. And this may not be the release strategy that I expect to see because I was expecting to see the other release strategy to be triggered. But because the values are the same, it cannot determine what release strategy to call. So it is important then in customizing that I would need to, if I go to my customizing, my release procedure, I would need to maintain the value of bigger than or equal to 501 in order for a different release strategy to be triggered. It cannot take the value of 500. So this will be a check to make sure when you're finding your release strategy for the values that you have entered that only one release strategy is called. It needs to be unique. As I said, if I was to change the value to higher than 500, then I can see that my LTD, LD release strategy is called because the value is bigger than 500 euros. So this is one thing to note. Okay, so I'll just go back to that example. So as I mentioned, always use transaction CL30N. Check your values of your document and see how what release strategy you expect to be triggered. If it's uh, called correctly there, then it means that the customizing um, is set up correctly. And as I said, uh, the reset of the release strategy only takes place um, if the new total order value is higher than the old one. So if the value is lower the, in the document, it will not re-trigger a release strategy. It also depends on your changeability indicator um, in customizing. I'll just go back into the changeability indicator. So these changeability indicator, we use up for six, we request, we would recommend to use for purchasing documents and four for um, the purchase requisition so that a release strategy is triggered, so changeable, so a new release strategy, if new release strategy or value change is triggered. They're the recommendations by SAP. Okay, so we go back to our PowerPoint presentation. And here we can see that the release strategy is not triggered for PO, so for the scenario two, we will take this purchase order and check why the release strategy is not triggered for this purchase order. Okay, so I have created this purchasing purchase order, so the first thing I need to do is check the characteristics values that I have used within this purchase order and check it through transaction CL30N. So in this case, I had used the NB order type. My purchasing group is 001. My material groups are for the three items is 01, 02, and 03. The total net order value of this document is 3,000. 900 and my purchasing document category is F. 
So let's go back into the system, type in my values in B, 001, my material group is 01, 02, 03, my total net order value 3,900, and my purchasing document cash agreed with for purchase order. So as I expect, the uh, release strategy DLLD should be triggered for this release strategy. And this is what I would expect to call within the document. So what could be the possible reason? So we need to determine in customizing, so let's go back into customizing And this is the release strategy that I am expecting, a classification that I've maintained. And I would expect, as I said, LDDL. However, for material group, it is a requirement that a blank characteristic is maintained. So I need to check, has this blank value been maintained? It has not been selected here. So the release procedure, um, as I said, for purchasing document is carried out on header level. So for this, the following values, so in this case will be 0, 01, 0, 02, and 0, 03, are aggregated to header level, but they're aggregated as a blank value because they're different on each item. So the plant and material group are two characteristic fields that we would be aggregated onto header level, level if, um, if there were different um, values maintained. So I need to maintain the value. So I just need to back out of this. You can also select F1 for the characteristic through here. And what I mean by maintaining blank value is you just maintain the description blank here within the characteristic for MATKL. Um, for my material group, and then I would save it. And then I would need to go back into my release strategy customizing setup, select the blank value, and save it. So that it's aggregated to header level. Okay, so I need to change the value in order to re-trigger a release strategy. So we'll just go back into this document. and change the value to 5. And now I can see that the release strategy is triggered for this release group and release strategy because I've maintained the blank value. So just to be aware, for if you are using the material group characteristic, um, and your reference to the CEKKO structure make TKL field, that you need to maintain a blank value within that characteristic in order for the release strategy to be triggered. So now we can see that the release strategy is triggered and that we can really now release it through ME29 in for, uh, for the processing of this purchasing document. So for characteristic checks, these are the checks that you need to carry out on following characteristics if the release strategy is not triggered. So as I mentioned, the release procedure for doc purchasing document is carried out at header level. And for this, the following values are aggregated from the items on header level. So for here, we would have plant and material group. So the plant is only aggregated on header level if all items contain the same plant. Um, and the same for material group, but if they are different, if more than one alternative plant exists, a blank value is aggregated on header level, and a release strategy is then searched for with this value. So we need to maintain the blank characteristics, as I said, in customizing and through transaction CT04. 
If it was the case that you were using a cost center or material numbers or version numbers, the characteristics must be entered as they are specified on the database. That is, the item category must be entered in the internal format. So for example, value 0 to 9, then the values must be entered with leading zeros. If you were using the case of item category, then the item category used as the characteristics, you check that the customer uses the internal format defined in customizing. So we would need to check if you're using any of those characteristics, um, you should check that they're maintained as correctly as mentioned here. In uh, SAP, well, SAP provides the enhancements for release strategies. So we provide these, both these enhancements, one for the requisitions and one for purchase orders. And the enhancements allow to you to change the communication structure for determining the release strategy for internal and external documents. Um, here we have maintained these uh, function modules. So we have exit, SAP LB, LBND 001 and 00. Four for the requisitions, and 001 is used for item uh, level, and 004 for overall level. We have the 002 then provided for purchase orders. So here I have outlined this statement, ESA CBAN is equal to ICBAN, and this statement is mandatory. Um, it's for, otherwise after calling the exit, if you do not maintain this within the user exit, um, the release strategy will not appear. Um, in the user exit, the data are all available in the structure ICEKKO, and the handover from ICEKKO to the calling program is via structure ECEKKO. So in the user exit, ICEKKO has to be copied to ECKKO for the purchasing documents. So this is a mandatory line that needs to be maintained within each of the function modules. And here I've just given a quick snapshot shot view of the call customer function. So for this for overall, it is good to maybe set a breakpoint here where you can see if CBAN is equal to star CBAN. So breakpoint to see the values of the CBAN after the user exit. So after the coding that you have used within this uh, user exit, it is good to see what are the values when entering the user exit and when exiting the user uh, exit. So check the values and then check those values with the, with the transaction say CL30N and that will determine exactly from the values of that which release strategy you would expect to see. So it's good to know where to set the breakpoint and check the values in the CEKKO structure for the external purchasing documents. And we also provide these user fields that are available in CKKO and CBAN um, for you to determine on how you wish the release strategy to be triggered uh, defined using your own custom code. So for this case, we're going to do a test case on why the release strategy is not triggered for the purchase order. This number, and we go back into the system. And this is my purchasing document. And as I can see, there is no release strategy called at header level. Back into my transaction CL30N. And I know for the values that I have created, it's for the document type NB. My purchasing group is 001. I've maintained for the values material group 01 and 02. The value of my document is 750 euros, and it says purchase order. I check in my final initial class. I expect the system to determine this release strategy when creating a document for those values. However, this has not happened. So the reason could be why. I checked. So I've now checked that my material group characteristic is maintained correctly. So I can see that all my customizing that I've maintained is set correctly. So my next check will be, is a user exit active? And for this, we can check transaction. C37, as I mentioned, this is the user exit that we provide, 002, for purchase orders. 
I can see from here in my include by just double selecting this I can see that there's custom code maintained within this user exit so let's see what it is doing um, so if my system user is LD test which is me my user and my my material that I'm using is say BK math then it looks to be that I'm appearing that I'm changing my purchasing group to the value 002 from checking that if I entered 002 in my CL30M transaction, select find an initial class, it doesn't appear to have a purchase a release strategy triggered for those values. So what can I do as well is I can set a breakpoint. And what I would do is go to SE38. The program used for release strategies triggering in the background is the following program. Just taking a moment to load. So here you can see this is code. So I'm not really interested in any part of this code, but I am interested to check if that um, exit is active. So I would set a breakpoint here. And I also set a breakpoint here. And now I'm just going to go back into my document. I'm going to change my value in order to re-trigger a release strategy. I'll increase the PO quantity. I'll carry out the checks. It should bring me into my customers, into the debugging mode. Apologies, now I work on the classic debugger. So here I want to check, is this field active? I'm just going to jump past that for S7, and I can see that the user exit is active. So S5 will bring me into the user exit. This is, as I mentioned, the important line that needed to be maintained for the CEK code structures field to be copied in. I'm checking my username, so that applies to me. I'm reading the material. My material, at the moment, my um, purchasing group is 001, but now it has changed to 002. So now I realize that the release strategy is not triggered because after checking CL30N. Um, and one thing that I would recommend on showing you as well is going back in here and we'll just re-trigger it again by changing the value. So here, as I said, we will check the value of active. Fix. I'm just going to overwrite this so that I can see if by not exit, entering the user exit, will it trigger my release strategy? And I'll just select F8 through. And now I can see that my release strategy is called because of the custom coding that I have entered in the user exit. So it is good to check if you have that user exit the specified one for the purchase order or if it's the case that you're using the internal stock purchase requisition with the user exits provided. Is it active? What are your values before entering the user exit? What is the values after the exiting the user exit? And compare them then by using transaction CL30N. Is it um, applicable to a release strategy? And um, as I mentioned, had checked here, by entering after exiting my user exit code, 
The purchasing group is set to the value 002. Select final initial class. There is no release strategy maintained for those values. Okay. So, as I said, these are points to note. Check is your user active. You can use transaction CMOD if you know the project name and check if it's active. As I said, we use transaction SE37. Enter the function module 002 for purchase order, 4 for item, uh, 1 for over all. And then check um, SE38. This is the program. I would set a breakpoint here at this active check. Also set a breakpoint here. If it is active, it will be set to X. If it's not active, it won't, it won't be set. Um, and check the values of the CEKKO after exiting the, the user exit and check the values then within CL30N. So steps to determine why release strategy is not triggered. So when I get an incident in from a customer, these will be the steps that I would follow to check why is it not determined. So this is a very important transaction, CL30N. I would use this tr transaction first. I would enter the values of the document um, and click on the Find Initial Class. And if you get a result, then check the cost. If you do not get a result, then I would check my cost the customizing if there is a release strategy which matches the values of the document. If there is more than one release strategy, this is determined, as I did in the first example, overlapping release strategies. It needs to be unique. No overlapping release strategies is allowed in SAP, and it needs to be unique. So that would be one thing to check. If you get exactly one result, then this would be an indicator that the customizing was defined correctly. Then I would check the characteristics that you are using within the release strategies, the values. So if you are using material group or plant or cost center or versions, the characteristic values maintain correctly. If it's the case that all checks uh, all above is okay, then I would check are you using the user exit provided by SAP? Um, if so, then check that this magic line, as I mentioned, is maintained within the user exit. And then I would also check in the values within the CEKKO structure or the C-band for requisitions after exiting the user exit and check the values then within CL30N should it be determined. If it's the case that all of these will then, yes, open an instance with an SAP, but I just wanted to provide you with a help to see what, what could be the cause um, within release strategy not being triggered. So these would be the steps that I initially would carry out first in SAP. So within regards then to FAQ questions that I would see of instance coming in, what for the regards of a deletion of a release strategy. So I would just open up those these notes just to go through the information that we provide from SAP with regards to the deletion of a release strategy. These are um, good FAQ notes and KBAs that we have created to try and help you, the customer, with determining why release strategies are either triggered or why you may have call, uh, issues with the release strategy. So these are all, um, as I mentioned here, the user exit, relevant information. But we will move to point five with regards to the deletion of the release strategies. So here, these are all the tables that make up the release strategies and may contain entries from previous customizing settings, such as old release groups, which were deleted in customizing but not in the table. So this creates an inconsistency. So to eliminate the consistencies, we would proceed as follows. So make all the deleted release strategies in customizing again, save them, and then delete them in the following sequence. This is important, that we follow this sequence in order to delete a release strategy. So we would delete the release strategy itself, the indicator, then, then the release code, then the release group, and then the corresponding class. Um, you can use transaction SE16 SA, to check whether the entries were deleted in the tables named above. Um, we also execute we have this check report in customizing OM uh, GQCK or this transaction um, and ensure that the red traffic light is not displayed. So all POs um, 
should be released before removing a release strategy from the system because once the release strategy has been removed, the release strategy tab gets deactivated in the PO header tab and then the system will not allow you to the PO to do a goods receipt without releasing it. So it's an important to make sure that all the release strategies, that if you have any open purchase order, that they are released before you delete your release strategy from the system and then to follow it in this sequence. So it said if you are having inconsistencies, we would suggest that you create it again in customizing, save them, and then delete them in the following sequence. Okay. Um, this is the report we would run in either to make uh, the, the system co um, consistent and you would use these class type 0 and 32, uh, the object table KSSK and the selected to the delete to make the system consistent if the release strategy is still inconsistent in the system. And I also have this KBA that I have created which provides why you would use this report. So I'll say more than one release strategy is selected in transaction. So the, the release strategy is ret retrieved in CL30N, but you, it is not maintaining, customizing. So more than one release strategy is selected in transaction CL30N. The release strategy is deleted from customizing, but still is triggered in the purchase of document. So those would be the symptoms that you're receiving. So as I said, reproducing the issue, so you would have created the purchase order, Saved it, check the toolbar, and you can see that the release strategy is triggered. However, you checked in customizing, and this release strategy does not exist. So as I said, in this case, L1, LD strategy does not exist in customizing. You have followed the correct sequence of deleting this release strategy, as I mentioned in this note, but the release strategy is still triggered when creating the purchase order and can also be seen in transaction CL30N, which here I have given CL30N, and I can see that the values were triggered. So what could be the cause? It's an inconsistency. So the number of the release strategies in transaction CL24N needs to correspond to the number of the defined release strategies in customizing. So in this case, there's an entry in CL24N, so for this object class of my class of type 032, I here can see that this L1LD is maintained in CL24N, but not in customizing. So the, the resolution to this would be to run this report and enter the class type 032 enter the object table KSSK and the X indicator and uh, this would make the, the system consistent again that all the tables are consistent with what's maintained within customizing. That's with regards to the deletion of a release strategy. Changes to a release strategy. So there has been incoming incidents where customers would like to make uh, changes to the release code. So issues with release strategies in purchase requisitions or purchase orders. So release codes are displayed incorrectly in ME52 in, uh, in the requisitions or within the purchase orders. You could be getting incorrect statuses are assigned to already released codes in purchasing documents. So that pick bar is uh, not assigned or is assigned incorrectly. Um, already released lines have to be released again. So with reproducing this issue, um, you would have checked in your the release strategy tab or you can see these uh, issues. So what um, is the problem is the issue may have been that you have added uh, new release codes to the release strategy. However, in SAP we recommend that you must absolutely avoid changes to release strategy customizing once the release strategy is created and in use. And I've uh, pointed in this note is also a good note as I mentioned earlier on point six in this note. So if you would like to introduce such a change what, uh, to your release strategy. What we recommend as follows is make sure that the, all the old purchase requisitions or purchase orders have been released. Create a new release strategy with the copy function and extend the new release strategy as required. So maintain the new release codes within the new release strategy. Don't delete the original release strategy. This way, op this way the open rep purchasing documents will be unaffected by the changes and then that the new release strategy will be triggered for any new purchase documents that will be created. So this we would recommend make no changes to the release strategy customizing once it is in use. 
uh, to create a new release strategy as your per your requirement that you wish. Um, uh, so the next, uh, uh, where I've seen instance coming in where customers would like to, um, with regards to multiple currencies in release strategy. So you would like to use more than one currency in the release strategy process. So if you want to use different currencies in your release approval procedure, you must create different release strategies and maintain for every currency own characteristics. And the, for this reason, because the header data currency is then converted into the local currencies, and afterwards the local currency is converted into the currency of the characteristic. And this is explained in this note. So you need to maintain a different characteristic um, and a different release strategy when you're using multiple currencies. So say for this business scenario, say Company 1000 exists in two countries and these countries have the US dollars and the Euro as a local currency. So you would like to define the release strategy with the following characteristics. So the, with the plant and the total net order value. So for the total net order value, you would like to have the following release levels, level one and level two. So the exchange rate is set here. We will create a characteristics for each currency involved and it's necessary to define a value for any characteristic. So we will create the release strategy U1 for the dollars and E1 for the euro. And we will maintain the characteristic uh, at the currency you wish. Um, the version management in using it for release strategy. So a reset of a release strategy when version number is set as a characteristic in customizing. So you can you may have the sense where the release strategy is not reset after changing some fields. So for example, the delivery date and clicking the version complete indicator in transaction code ME22N or for purchase orders or ME52N for requisition. So you set the version number as a characteristic value within your release strategy and you've maintained it. And then you um, create the purchase order. Uh, you release the purchase order, and then um, you decide you wish to change some fields, such as the delivery date. And then you set the delivery, uh, the version complete indicator. However, the release strategy is not reset. The reason for this, um, as mentioned in this note again, a reset of a release strategy only takes place when the total net value is higher than the old one. And this is also valid when using a version number as a characteristic within customizing. So the release strategy works the same with or without version management active. The only difference is in the case of version management active is that the release strategy will be set on version complete. However, the criteria for the reset uh, still remains the same where the new value is higher than the old value. Okay, and the, another KBA for that's good to know for version management. Um, release strategy is not triggered when version number is set as a characteristic, and as I mentioned, this is just to make sure that it's defined as it is maintained within the system with the leading zeros. And missing for release strategy on hold. Here the whole functionality is set for a PO, the release strategy tab disappears. So you create a PO with purchase transaction image 21, it's set on hold and the release tab is missing. So when a purchase order is on hold, no release strategy is signed to the purchase order. This is standard design in SAP. When the purchase order is subsequently saved, because the relevant data for the release strategy has not saved, say is not changed, so there is no release strategy assigned to the purchase order. Once there is a change in any value that is part of the release strategy, then the release strategy will be assigned to the purchase order. So just with regards, we also have a decision tree in purchasing orders was created by a colleague, so just wanted to give you a quick link to that as well. So just to, do you receive an error code? Um, so if so, yes, and if these are the one of the errors, here ME179 is a, a, a possible error that you'd get, uh, error in classification. So your release strategy is assigned to two classes, and this is not possible with purchasing documents. You need to go into CL20 and to delete the incorrect line. I said only one class is allowed per purchasing document. 
um, no suitable purchasing documents found, ME260. Check if the document is subject to release strategy. If yes, to the print, there, the release strategy needs to be fully released. So you need to check um, if you're carrying out any further documents. Make sure that the release strategy is set and released within transaction ME29 in for purchase orders for that case. I just wanted to provide the function modules for requisitions and then the BAPIs that are useful to have and to know what uh, purchase orders they, as I have used earlier and within how many release strategies are found. This is a good uh, function module uh, to have to check if you wanted to do it through debug.